All right, today we're gonna look at nine three two-way tables. Go ahead, start your warm up. When you are done, hit play to continue. But be sure to hit pause first. All right, how many people surveyed speak more than one language? Speak more than one language, yes. So that is 12 plus four. So that is 16 fabulous people. Now, how many people surveyed have never traveled outside of the U.S.? Been outside the U.S.? Nope. So that's this data right here. That is 4 plus 12, which is also 16 people. Now, my last question. How many people surveyed speak only one language? Speak more than one language? So I'm looking at no here. And, and have traveled outside the US, so are both of those converge? So I'm looking for how many people surveyed speak one language and have traveled outside the US. Speak more than one language? Nope, I don't. And have been outside the US? 18 people. All right, let's take a look at our first example. All right, so what is a two-way table? A two-way table displays two categories of data collected from the same source, meaning we asked one person two different questions. So you randomly survey students in your school about their grades on the last test and whether they studied for the test. The two-way table shows your results. So I'm looking at students who studied and didn't study and if they passed or failed. This right here, each entry is called a joint frequency because it represents two things. 21 students studied and 21 students passed. So it says, how many of the students in the survey, survey above studied for the test and passed? So I'm looking for studied and passed right there. That's 21 students. Now, the sum of the rows and columns in a two-way table are called, so when I add these up, 21 plus 2, that's 23. 1 plus 6, that's 7. 6 plus 2 is 8, 21 plus 1, that's 22. Those numbers there are what we call marginal frequencies. So let's take a little bit bigger look at those now. So what I want to do now is like find those frequencies. So what I'm looking at here is I'm going to add another column here called total. And so my total here, 21 plus 2, as you recall, that was 23. 1 plus 6 is 7. So I'm going to kind of add to this box here. Then I'm also going to add my total here. So let's see, that's 22, and this is 8. So I'm adding yet another column here or I should say row. But now, what do you think this information is? Well, it's gonna be this total, 23 plus seven is 30, and if I did this right, 22 plus eight also is 30. So this right here is telling us that 23 students passed in total, seven students failed. Now this one represents the 30 students surveyed. So there were a total of 30 students in this survey. Here, this is the total number of students that did not study. So eight students didn't study. And here, 22 students studied. 
So these are the marginal frequencies, and this is what interpreting them means. So remember, interpret isn't just name, but tell me what they mean. All right, go ahead. Let's complete on your own. Number one, hit pause and play when you are ready to reveal your answers. All right, so we've got 51 students will attend the game, 25 will not, 76 surveyed, 36 will not attend the dance, and 40 will attend the dance. So how many students will attend the dance but not the football game? That would be five. And then interpret all of these. That's your information right there. All right, so taking a look at example two, we're gonna make a two-way table now. So you randomly surveyed students between the ages of 12 and 17 about whether they ride the bus to school. The results of the survey are shown in the tally sheets. Make a two-way table that indicates the marginal frequencies. Now, I've got a nice little um, grid here to kind of help us out a little bit because we want to make a nice two-way table. So first thing we're gonna do is, let's see, I'm gonna start down here, and I'm gonna have this be rides the bus. Then here, does not ride bus. And then we're gonna need to put a total column here or a total row. So this right here, we're talking about students. Now, the next thing we're talking about here is the age. So we've got 12 to 13, 14 to 15, 16 to 17, and then our totals. All right, so in this, of course, again, were the ages. And we want to make sure we label all of these to help us out. So let's see, I have 24 here, 12 here, 14 here, and 50 here. All right, and then I've got 16 here, 13 here, 21, and then that total is... 50 for a grand total of 100 students surveyed. We've got 40 12 to 13 year olds, 25 14 to 15 year olds, and then 35 16 to 17 year olds. When I add those up, they also get 100. So we want to make sure we've neatly displayed all of our data and remember marginal frequencies are simply the totals. So now, let's talk about doing it a little bit differently. So we're gonna take the same information. Now we're gonna find the percentile. So for each age group, what percent of the students in the survey ride the bus to school? So here, I don't necessarily need my marginal frequencies, I just want the percentages. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and recreate this table. So I've got rides the bus, then does not ride bus. I don't need a total row this time. And then this is the student. The other piece of information we're missing here is the age, so again, 12 to 13, 14 to 15, and 16 to 17, and this was the age. But now I want percentages. So when I look back up here, I had 14 out of 35. So that would give me 14 30 fifths, which is 4 tenths, which is 40%. So 
So we've got 40% ride the bus. The difference here then would be 60%. So then I've got 48%, then 52%, 60% and 40%. So for each age group, what percent, so notice each one of these percentages, because I'm looking at age group here, total 100. So what percent of students in the survey ride the bus to school? Which ones do not ride the bus to school? Organize the results in a two-way table. So that is what I have done here. So what this box is saying is 40% of the 16 to 17 year olds in the survey ride the bus to school. So if we look at B, it asks us to interpret this table a little bit more. It says the table in part A show a relationship between age and whether students ride the bus to school. So it looks like the older the students get, they are less likely to ride the bus. Because if it looks, we look at riding the bus, these have decreased, does not ride the bus, those have increased. So yes. As the age increases, students are less likely to ride the bus to school. Okay, so now it is your turn. Go ahead. Do on your own number two, go ahead and answer questions A, B, and C. Hit pause and play when you are ready to check your work. All right, let's check to see how you did. So we've got our two-way table here with our marginal frequencies. Notice both rows and columns add up to 100. Then we created our percentages here. So 45% of the sixth grade students buy a lunch to school. Does the table in part A show a relationship between grade level, lunch, and choice? Explain your answer. No, it's honestly pretty split about 50-50. So we do not show a relationship here between grade level and the amount of students who buy their lunch. All right, everybody, have a great day. We'll talk to you later.